In post-World War I Europe, secrecy between paranoid nations becomes paramount. The growth of international commerce creates a need for companies to keep their information secret from competitors. Germany's Arthur Scherbius develops the Enigma machine as a means of keeping those business transactions secure. It works by generating an electric current when a letter key is pressed. A number of moving mechanical parts then scramble the path of the current, producing a different letter each time the key is pressed. The Enigma machine is about to become the German Army's most powerful code-making weapon in World War II. A weapon they're confident can keep their secret military codes secret. Arthur Scherbius had invented a machine which, if you gave the machine to the enemy, even if you gave the machine to the enemy, there would be so many complications, so many possibilities that you could not, in reasonable time, decipher the message. Just like Alberti's code wheel, the Enigma machine creates multiple polyalphabetic substitution ciphers. It's fast, it's mechanized, and it produces codes that seem unbreakable. It's a device for turning readable messages into unreadable messages. Given an Enigma machine with an unknown set of wheels, the enemy has to consider that that machine can be set up in 186 million, million, million ways. The millions of permutations are achieved by the number of variables involved when setting up the machine. At the height of the war, German operators change these settings every day. They place the rotors in a specified order from left to right. The rings that allow the rotors to turn are repositioned daily, as is the patch panel of cables electrically linking one letter to another. These variables make the Enigma encryption virtually immune to frequency analysis. The Germans think their Enigma code uncrackable. They believe no one has enough time or the mathematical ability to work through the millions of combinations. A coded message is created by typing the German plain text into the machine and then having the encrypted message transmitted via Morse code. With the outbreak of war in September 1939, Nazi coded messages flood the radio airwaves. At the same time, British military intelligence is in the process of setting up the most secret place in wartime Britain, a place it hopes can crack the Enigma code. Bletchley Park, 50 miles north of London, becomes known as Station X. It's staffed by a hand-picked team of mathematicians and graduate scholars, including Alan Turing, one of the founding fathers of modern computing. Turing and his team are under extreme pressure to come up with some way, either mathematical or mechanical, to crack the Enigma code. By 1940, fleets of German U-boats are sinking thousands of tons of Allied supply ships in the North Atlantic. The U-boats are receiving their orders by Enigma-coded radio messages. The U-boats in the North Atlantic were in constant coded communication uh, with Germany, saying where these convoys were and arranging for groups of U-boats to come together to attack them. And all of those messages were encoded using Enigma machines. So cracking Enigma was the key to finding the U-boats and protecting the convoys. Turing begins by exploiting the mathematical and human weaknesses of Enigma. Because the machine cannot encrypt a letter as itself, Turing eliminates thousands of letter permutations. Combine this inherent flaw with the fact that lazy or tired operators sometimes forget to change their personal settings each day, and this lowers the odds further. But it's the daily weather forecast that gives the British their first major breakthrough. Every day the Atlantic weather is broadcast from the U-boats, and every day it follows the same format wind speed, atmospheric pressure, and temperature. Seeing the same message layout each day gives Turing the idea of using what he calls cribs, educated guesses to what at least part of the message might say. 
This is a crib in German of a weather forecast from the Bay of Biscay region. The received encrypted message is placed against the German plain text. If any letters match up with themselves, S's as S's, V's as V's, then the crib is wrong, as Enigma can't encrypt any letter as itself. So they slide the message along until they find no matches. The British now have clues as to what might be in the messages, but it's still too many man hours to work through all of the permutations and decipher the many thousands of daily intercepts. So they develop a machine of their own to rival the Enigma, a device that attempts to reverse the encryption process of an Enigma machine, known as the bomb. It operates like a search engine, number crunching possible solutions to fragments of encrypted text. But can the Bletchley bomb crack the Enigma code before the German Navy wins the War of the Atlantic? British code breakers of Bletchley Park now have a weapon to defeat the Nazi Enigma machine, the bomb. It's not designed to break coded messages, but to crunch through the millions of letter permutations contained in the so-called cribs, the clues obtained by the repeated use of weather reports, greetings, and test signals sent by the Nazis. The operator sets each drum into position according to the enciphered crib text they're testing. As the machine operates, it generates intermittent electrical circuits that run through every possible Enigma setting. The goal is to find an open circuit, which means the bomb has found a setting that converts all of the cipher characters into plain text without any errors. It's a hugely complicated device with nearly 12 miles of wiring and 97,000 carefully machined parts. This bomb has been reconstructed from plans and drawings over the past 16 years. Back in 1943, Jean Valentine was one of the bomb operators at Bletchley Park, working under the strictest security. Here in Bletchley, uh, we had five bombs, and there were two people to each bomb, so there were ten of us on a watch. And. Uh, Apart from them, you did not talk to anybody about your job. The minute you walked out of the bomb room, got in a, a vehicle to go back to wherever you lived, you didn't think or talk about it at all. Bletchley Park is one of the best examples of complete security in history. The Nazis had no idea the British were decoding their messages. They also had no idea that their code books and Enigma machines are being retrieved from captured U-boats. Turing and his team are working around the clock, cracking Enigma messages from U-boat positions to the location of reinforcements and feeding this information to the Allies. By 1945, there are over 300 bombs in operation on both sides of the Atlantic. The days of the Nazi Enigma are numbered. The cracking of Enigma and the intercepting and decoding of Nazi messages shapes the outcome of many campaigns and battles of World War II, including D-Day, Alamein, and Anzio. But it's perhaps the vital role of decoding the U-boat messages in the North Atlantic that saves the most lives. Prime Minister Winston Churchill famously states that the Bletchley Park codebreakers were the geese that laid the golden eggs and never cackled. The war wasn't won by the codebreakers. The, the war was won by, by boots on the ground. Without it, the war would not have been lost. But on the other hand, with it, it was certainly shortened by a significant amount. <laughs> 